You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hi, this is Susan Rosen, your host for Healthy Tips After 50. Today, I'm going to talk about something called the portfolio diet. And I had never heard of this before, even though it turns out it's been around since 2002. It's a doctor up in Toronto, at the University of Toronto, who developed it. Its main purpose is to help people bring down their cholesterol numbers. This is something that's really very interesting because it turns out that what you can do with this is you can either go along with it the way that it is set up originally or you can actually take a regular, your regular diet and just make some changes to the foods that you're eating, which should supposedly bring your cholesterol down somewhat. If you go strictly with the portfolio diet, then that would bring your cholesterol numbers down even further. And it is particularly helpful in bringing down the LDL numbers as well as the triglycerides. So looking at the diet, it actually looks like a very interesting and and not a bad diet to have to be on. It's primarily a low saturated fat diet. And it is about 2000 calories a day. The Big things that you take out are a lot of the red meat and other high saturated fat items. Then you put in plant protein, about 50 grams a day, and that's mostly from soy foods such as tofu, soy milk, soy meat, as well as legumes, which are things like beans and lentils. You also add in 45 grams a day, which this article I was reading says it's about a handful, but I think that's a lot more. Uh, Somewhere else when I was reading about it, they said that's about 30 almonds. I don't think I could put 30 almonds in my hand. The other thing you can do is use nut butters as well so it's it's all kinds of nuts including peanuts which is interesting because peanuts are not nuts peanuts actually are legumes i believe then there's the what they call viscosolular fiber and there's 20 grams a day for that and those are things like oats barley eggplant okra apples berries oranges and psyllium The next thing is plant sterols, and that has two grams a day. And you use things, fortified foods, like spreads, juices, yogurt, or you can get it from supplements, which is interesting. They also are found naturally in things like wheat bran, peanuts, again, almonds, and vegetable oils. But it turns out that those don't have quite enough in them to meet the diet's recommendations for how much to be eating. And it turns out that each component, each part of it, has been shown actually to lower cholesterol by 5 to 10 percent. And that all of this does add up to be something that would be worth going on the diet for. It 
has had about three or four different studies done with it over the years. And all of them have been successful in bringing down cholesterol, which for some people that would also lower your risk of heart disease because there is supposedly a connection between heart disease and cholesterol. I'm not sure that that is quite as hard fast as they make it sound, but um, they are expecting it to do that. It also turns out that it, it's not really very good as a weight loss diet. And that's probably because of the kinds of foods that you end up eating on it. But it seems that they did, the last study actually on it was done in July of last year, or maybe, no, yeah, last year, 2018. And they found that people who went on the diet for four to 24 weeks in conjunction along with um, a low saturated fat diet, reduce their LDL, which is the quote unquote bad cholesterol, by 27% compared to baseline, which is pretty good. And compared to just 10% in people that were just following a low saturated fat control diet, not the portfolio diet, but just doing um, low saturated fat. Because the thing about the portfolio diet is that it is fairly regimented isn't the right word, but they do tell you how much of each you should eat. And then within that category, you can pick whatever foods you want that fulfill that kind of, of category. So the other thing they found in that study was that there were improvements in what they call cardiometabolic risk factors. Those are things like triglycerides, blood pressure, and C-reactive protein, which is something that I think everyone does want to see get lower because that does have a correlation with heart disease and also with cancer and other chronic illnesses. So that is something that I think we, we all should work on and make sure that it is lower. The researchers there decided, concluded, that the diet actually reduced the estimated 10-year risk of heart disease by 13%. So there again goes the um, connection between the cholesterol and heart disease. Although, depending, I mean, this, this looks like a pretty good and clean diet. So it could very well be that it is from that and, and just by the way also lowers cholesterol. One of the things in, in one of the articles that I read about it is that if your cholesterol is really high, the diet by itself may not bring it down. But if you add in exercise, lose some excess weight, if you have some um, if you do all of those things and it still doesn't come down enough, then you might need to get statins, which I really wouldn't. I don't like the whole idea of statins. Too many um, other things that it creates, other issues that it brings up. But um, I think there are some other things probably out there that you could do, but it seems to me that if you can follow this diet fairly closely, that you probably could very easily bring your cholesterol down and, and probably keep it down. So they also say in here that um, you don't actually have to eliminate all animal foods to get results. That actually the earliest studies 
did use a strict vegetarian diet. Um, some of the more recent ones have included low-fat dairy and lean meat. And they are also looking at an enhanced version of the diet that also includes healthy monounsaturated fats and exercise, which I think everyone should do anyways, particularly the exercise part. Um, and then one of the other things that seems kind of interesting is that the, while the diet does lower LDL cholesterol, it's not really known if it actually reduces heart attacks and deaths, which they say statins do. And I still question that, but we won't go there in this, in this podcast. Um, and it also doesn't produce the same effects as some stronger statins, but it also says that perhaps if you do this, if you have a, a statin and you do the diet, you could take a lower dose statin, which would be good because there are some other problems with people who are taking very high statins. They also point out in this article that there's no single food that is actually the answer to a cholesterol issue. If your cholesterol is high, you need to combine certain ones for it to work to bring the cholesterol down in the portfolio diet. But it, it, they're suggesting that you might want to do the portfolio diet together with getting some counseling from a registered dietitian who could help you to initially set up what you're eating and how you make your own food, those sorts of things to support you in actually staying on the portfolio diet to get the best results. And Overall, I mean, it looks to be a pretty healthy diet. Like I say, I've never heard of it before. I can't believe it's been out since 2002, and I've never run across it. Maybe they called it something else. I don't know. But anyways, that's for this one. And there are a lot, if you are interested in it, there. if you Google it, there are a lot of articles about it. Um, WebMD has a... Um, a list where it tells you a suggested way to go about it, what to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, that sort of thing. And I'm sure there are other articles as well that you could find to help you in putting together a diet and making it not nearly as arduous as it might sound. That's it for today. Um, as I always like to say, I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. So please don't consider it to be. And I am, as always, posting on the website as well as posting in my Facebook page on my Facebook Healthy Tips After 50 page. So please join and like the page on Facebook and get some of the additional information that I post there. I will look forward to talking with all of you next week. This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit HealthyTipsAfter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.